The title of my message is The Keys of the Kingdom. Amen. Amen. The Keys of the Kingdom. There are many keys that God has provided for us to use to gain advancement, to gain lifting, to gain an advantage and an upper hand in this kingdom. Amen? Amen. We are looking at Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. That's Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. Praise God. Now this is what I'm speaking of is keys to the kingdom. Or keys rather of the kingdom. But there is one key to the kingdom and we all know that that is Jesus Christ. The key, the gate, the entrance, the doorway, the one pathway to the kingdom, to salvation, to God the Father. Amen. Amen. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, he said in John 14, 6. He's the only entrance point. There's no other point. There's no other way that we can gain life and life eternal. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Are we there? Yes, we are there. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever shall thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. So this is what we are working with. Amen. Amen. There are practical principles that we call keys that will open that will lock, that will loose, that will bind. And we want to dig into that this afternoon and see what God will have for us. Amen. Praise God. First of all, we must understand that. Okay, give me Genesis 1 1. Yeah, we just put that on screen, but you don't need to put it. It says in the beginning, God created the world. Amen. We know Genesis 1 1. And first point we want to take is that in the beginning, Underline in the beginning. We must make God alpha of everything we do and we embark on in this life. Amen. Amen. As kingdom ambassadors, as believers, as saints. He must be alpha. He must be beginning. If not, he is not obligated to be omega. That means he's not obligated to finish it. He's not obligated to be the ending of that thing. If you don't make him the author, he's not obligated to be the finisher. Amen. Amen. So we must make God alpha of everything we would do, any business we would embark on. Anyone that's looking forward to marriage, we must seek direction. Make sure that this is his will for your life. Amen. We must put him in everything we do. He must be priority. Amen. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Seek first the kingdom of God, he says in Matthew 6, 33. Amen. Amen. We must seek the kingdom of God and then all these things will be added unto us. Amen. Jesus is the embodiment of all that the kingdom has to offer the believer. Jesus Christ came as the example. He came as everything that God would want us to be and to aspire to be. Amen. 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 So he is the embodiment. Luke 17 21. Praise God. And I should turn there in Mark 1 15 says that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That is Jesus speaking to us. And he's telling us that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, which means I am here. I am representing the kingdom. And then now in Luke he goes 17 21, yes, and says, Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So he's telling them in Mark that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And now that he's telling them in Luke that the kingdom of God is within you. Who does you is talking about? The believer. So what are we looking for outside? If the kingdom of God is in you and Jesus Christ is that one that is within you, what else are you looking for? What are you depending on outside of that which God has put in you, which is Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit? That spirit would work it in us to make all things new, to make that which is impossible, possible. We now understand that the kingdom is, is within us. So what then is our role? Our role is to have dominion. Amen. He said, let them have dominion. We ought to now, how to put this, rule over creation and 
make the world a mirror effect of what will be happening in heaven. However, heaven is, we have the power and the authority as God's little g on this earth to now create a sort of heaven or a mirror of heaven. So whatever we say, we are not allowing on this earth, heaven has already locked it up. Whatever we say shall be loose on this earth, heaven will now loose it. So there must not be a big difference as long as there is strong Bible believing, Holy Ghost filled Christians, believers on this earth, walking in the path and the authority that we should and we ought to walk in. Amen. 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 He gives the church keys, principles to unlock infinite provisions and possibilities of the kingdom. So we want to get into some of those keys now. And I want to start with the first key, which I have here is prayer. Prayer is a very important and fundamental key of the kingdom. Prayer must be used across the board in all kingdom activities. But prayer, hear me, prayer is not the only key. Prayer is one. And we must always live by prayer. A lifestyle of prayer is what would make a strong believer. Yes, it's true. But prayer is only one key of the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, Be anxious for nothing. It indicates that different challenges, different things will come up in our life that will might uh, cause us to be anxious at different times and different periods of our life. But then it suggests that Turn to that. Okay. Be careful for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. So, he's showing us two types of prayer here. Supplication and thanksgiving. So, we ought to offer prayers of supplication and thanksgiving to combat anything that will cause anxiety in our life. Amen. Amen. Do we get that? Amen. Prayer is more important than Prayer is more than just communicating with God. Prayer is more than just a communication with God. Prayer is you, as man with dominion on earth, giving God legal authority, obligation, legal rights to interfere in earth's atmosphere and earth's uh, life that you are living, any troubles that you are going through, anything that is happening in your life, you are giving God authorization by your prayer to uh, calm down and make changes and do what he would have to do. Luke 18, 1 says, Men ought always to pray and not faint. Amen. Men ought always to pray and not faint. So if you will ever be classified as a man, you must make prayer a lifestyle. You must make prayer more than just a one-off thing, more than just an obligation. It must be something you fall in love with. Amen. Your continuous and unwavering prayer allows heaven to interject in your situation. Amen. Okay, praise God. John 10 34 tells us that we are gods on this earth, and if we refuse to pray, we are telling God in heaven that we have things under control down here. Yeah? We are telling Him that we don't need His interjection, we don't need Him to come and do anything in our lives, we have it under control. We, in our own power, we can do without God interjection. That's what a uh, prayerless life is telling God in the spirit. That you don't need him to come. You have it all under control. Key number two is tithing I have here. Very important key. That will open doors. That will open windows. Turn to Malachi 3. 10 to 11. Praise God. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that ye that there shall not be room enough for you to receive. So here we see that tithing opens the windows of heaven. Another thing tithing do, if you read to uh verse 11, it will show you that tithing rebukes the devourer. This is something that you are not given authority to do by yourself. 
It never said prayer, you will be broke the Bora. God said, if you tie, I, I myself will be broke the Bora. So you know that you can pray all you want to pray to the broke the Bora. Tithing is the key that will break the Bora. Are you getting it? Amen. Tithing is also the key that opens the windows of heaven. The blessings, the blessings that this key opens to us outweighs the tithe itself. The blessing that the keys opens to us that tithing itself you are giving tithe but the blessing that coming from tithe is more than the tithe itself listen the the the, the real blessing in tithe is uh for me personally it's being able to go to work and to have an income and to be able to tithe there's a satisfaction in itself that comes from it there's a when you do for the love and understanding the real blessing is actually being able to give to God. Amen. Amen. Being obedient to his word. Amen. Many of us who are under hardship may not be able to have an income to give tithe, but I'm telling you that's a blessing. Proverbs 10, 22. What is another blessing that this key tithe opens to us? Proverbs 10, 22. Let's see what that says. Yeah, Proverbs 10, 22. The blessings of the Lord, it make it rich. And it added no sorrow. Now, Satan can make rich too, but he will add sorrow to it. Yes. Amen. The blessings of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow. God gives us power to make wealth. Tithing is one of the keys that will open this up to you. He will give you ideas. He may not give you money. He will give you ideas to make money. He will give you ideas to make wealth. He will bless the works of your hands. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So tithing is very important. Amen. He will bless the works of your hands. He will rebuke the devourer. He will give power to make wealth. These are some of the blessings that the key of tithing opens unto the believer. Amen. Praise God. Key number three, honor. This is a key that we don't want to play with. Honor. Honor. First Peter two seventeen says, "Honor all men." Romans three, Romans thirteen seven says, "Give honor to whom honor is due." Amen. We must honor. You have to discern the value, the usefulness, the sacrifice of someone, and you will celebrate that in their life and esteem that person in whatever way you can. Honor. We must be very careful not to dishonor our men of God. We must be very careful not to dishonor men generally because you don't know what level a man is at, what he is carrying on his life. When you honor a man, you are honoring that which God has deposited on him. When you dishonor that man, too, you are also dishonoring that which God has deposited on him. So you will never partake in that if you dishonor that man. If you dishonor our grace, you will never walk in that grace. Unless God have mercy on you somehow and make another way. But this honor is what we must look out for. This honor is a seed that you will sow that will close your doors. Tide is a seed you can sow that opens your doors. This honor is a seed you will now sow and close that very same door. Amen. Praise God. There are some things that I do that I don't even need a apostle to come and impart me. You understand? We can sow seeds. We can do things and in honor that we can take certain graces, we can tap into anointings, we can rely on that which God has put in us, his life. Amen? Praise God. And that is the key of honor. Bless God. When you dishonor men, you dishonor the graces and the anointings that God had rest on them. They can't even bless you if they want to. They can pray for you, but there's something in the spirit that will block that prayer. That is your dishonor. Amen? Praise God. Let's take an example of that. Genesis 9, 20 to 27. It's a long read. Okay. Well, we know the story of Noah. When he uh, drank wine after, after the flood. When he drank and he became drunk. And Noah began. And Noah began to be an husband man. And he planted a vineyard. Uh -huh. And he drank of wine. And was drunken, and when he was uncovered within his tent, this verse, and Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. Uh -huh. 
And Sheman Japheth took a garment and laid it upon their both shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness. Go on. He's speaking of his honor here. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son has done. Now Noah was sleeping. Who told Noah what his younger son has done? Ah? Uh, Go ahead. Okay. Knew what his younger son had done. And said, Cursed be Canaan, the servant of the ser a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. Ah, uh, my God. And he said, Blessed be the Lord of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Okay, we can stop there. So this honor brings upon curse. We must honor our mother and father in the Lord, the scripture says. And this boy, <laughs> be careful not to uncover their nakedness. Now, listen, honor is very important. And there, uh, we may indirectly, in our attitudes, dishonor our man of God at times. We must be careful to repent and always ask God for mercy. That curses may not automatically fall upon us. He didn't even have to speak a word. What is upon his life will cause... You not talk open doors. Amen? Amen. Praise God. That is honor. Key number four. Very important. Giving. 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 Luke 6 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Whatever you give is a seed that will come back to you. Amen. Seed time and harvest will always remain. Amen. Pastor Enoch. E. Adibode once said, if there is anything you find that there is need of in your life or lack, give it. If there's anything that you have need of in your life, give it. It's a very spiritual practice. It's a principle. How can I give something that I have need of? Where, where is it going to come from? Amen. But it draws from heaven. It's like a magnet. That giving that you give will be sacrificial. It will hurt but it will reap a benefit, it will reap a reward, it will bring seed into your life. Two types of giving. Number one, kingdom investment. Very important here. Kingdom investment. You gave to advance the kingdom. You give up your time, of your resources. You see the churches will want to go to do a crusade, let's say, what skill or talent you might have, Whatever you can contribute to make sure that kingdom comes in that area. You see that there's something is needed in the church. You need to have to go to apostle. This is between you and God. Your giving is very important. Kingdom investment. God really honors that when it's done from the heart. It's not done by eye service that you want apostle to see, that you want somebody to see that you're doing this. Between you and God, work unto God and not unto men. Amen? Praise God. Number two, prophet offering. A prophet offering. You can tap into a covenant that he has with God by giving into the life of a prophet. You can lean on the anointed upon that man. Your prayer point for years can be answered in one day when you really meet a need of that such man. Okay. One day, you can be praying for something for years when you meet the need of a prophet and he prays for you. Open doors, open heavens, open your life. Okay. So a prophet offering. If you give unto a prophet, you will receive a profit reward. Amen? Amen. It's called a profit reward. First Kings 17, 13 to 14. Let's take an example of this. This is where the woman of Zarephath, the widow, gave on to Elijah. First Kings 17, 13 to 14. She gave up the last. And we know the story, what happened to her. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make me make for thee and thy son. 40. For thus said the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall a cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sent it rain upon his earth. So given to a prophet uh, yields multiplication. Whatever little you would have. Whatever you have in your hand and you give, it will multiply. It will be pressed down, shaken together, run and run over. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Key number four, where we are at five, uh, is faith. 
all of these things that we have spoken of, all of these keys, we must uh, add faith or mix a little faith with it as prophet says, mix, as apostle says, mix it with faith. Praise God. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is a substance of all things hopeful, the evidence of things not seen. We must, if we are praying and there is doubt in our heart, we did not mix it with faith that prayer cannot be answered. Amen. If we are giving and we are not giving cheerfully, we are giving believing that God will honor it and answer what we are asking, it will not be answered. We are blocking our own blessings. Amen? Amen. All these keys must be coupled with faith. Faith is like a master key that the believer uses to uh, advance in the kingdom of God, to gain lifting, to gain mastery. Faith is a must. Praise God. 